go ahead and get started. It's uh, first of all, thank you for being here three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, it's um, I'm glad we can all make it to the session. Hopefully, you're all here to see the Why What How Small Business Blogging. If not, we can all act uh, distracted for a second or two while you make an escape to uh, to another session. Um, my name is Sean Graham, and I partner with small businesses to help them build their marketing and brand strategies. And uh, and I look forward to talking to you a little bit about blogging. You can find me on Twitter at Sean Graham. Uh, I also blog about small business issues at the uh, my website, SeanGraham.me, and I, since 2007 I've been a blogger for Fast Company Magazine, so just a quick overview of, of my background for whatever that's worth. So uh, why, why should small businesses think about blogging? This is the interactive portion. <laughs> And I know we've talked about it some of the earlier sessions, so why why does it make Establish sense? Establish yourself as an expert. Okay. That's so true. subject matter expertise, positioning. Okay. I like it. What else? Try more, more traffic more traffic back to your site. More traffic, potentially, yep. Anything else? Any share, other reason? Share personality a little bit more beyond just like the basics of what you do. One of the things that I think really, and, and uh, I'll be talking about images tomorrow, and I promise you that if you go to that session, um, I have one of the, the greatest images you'll ever see from a local barber shop uh, that, that I think is just a great example of showing personality, a little creativity from a small business standpoint. But sure, I think that's one of the things as a small business that you can do that a lot of big businesses can is, is the way you differentiate yourself is through your passion and personality. So that's, that's one that's always near and dear to my heart, and I think blogging is definitely a great way to do that. So eyeballs of the site, subject matter, expertise, personality, is there anything else that, uh, any other reason why you should think about starting a blog? How many people have a blog for their business? Is that all? Oh, uh, the, uh, and is that, is that seem, um, is there anything we're missing? When you're thinking about why you get up and do the things that you do and generate that content and go out and share it through your social networks, I mean, are there other benefits that, that you'd have to list? I think sometimes you can you can tell people about your business or your organization through a blog post in a way they may not fit on your website on a page. So it gives people some more information about you or what you do or maybe also with your experience. Right. No, I, I think those are all great. And you know, when I really think about it, um, you know, the first thing, and I think it's the thing that small businesses focus on the most, is uh, you know, blogging. There are certain things that are just they'd be nice to do. But at the end of the day, if it doesn't help your business, and, and especially when you're a small business, you have a lot of other things on your plate or you're a nonprofit, you really have to figure out that business case. So a lot of the things that people focus on first and foremost is driving eyeballs to your website. And uh, you know, so that's that and ultimately the idea when I think about why I started blogging, it was sort of a Ron Burgundy moment where I had a book that came out in 2007 called Courting Your Career. I just finished a website. I had a guy that worked at Bruner uh, pull a website together for me for 500 bucks. And then this other author said, you know, you should really look into this blogging. And uh, I was like, blogging? You mean you, I just sit there and type? Like, what, you know, what, why would I do that? And he said, yeah, because the, the longer people are on your website, the more likely they are that they're going to buy something. And with that, I, I sort of pieced together this sort of makeshift WordPress site, and I started blogging. Wasn't exactly sure what I was talking about. And, and it's something that's evolved over time. And right around that same time, I was also, because I had a book out, was pitching articles to different media outlets. And one of the outlets that we pitched to was Fast Company Magazine. And it was progressive, because now if you go to CNN or MSNBC or pretty much any news website, they all have blogs. But back then, Fast Company was probably one of the first media outlets to really embrace creating this community of bloggers. So it was sort of a, you know, for me, it wasn't some um, strategic decision. The guy said, you know, if you think about doing this, maybe you'll sell more books, and that was enough justification for me. But th there's a lot of focus on that. Uh, we can talk more about what exactly that means. Um, you can position yourself as a subject matter expert. The problem is with when you think about what expert means, um, everybody, look at how many people raise their hand when they had a blog. Some of you are going to overlap your spaces, so expert means a lot of different things to a lot of people. But as more and more people create blogs, um, you know, I think that's harder and harder to do. If you look, um, at, at number three, keeping your website looking minty fresh, back to the CNN or MSNBC example, your website's not going to change day in day out that much, right? So adding a blog does allow you to pump that content in. So if somebody went to your site today, if you went to CNN today, next week, and a month from now, and nothing really changed, chances are you're not going to keep going back. Uh, or hopefully you won't keep coming back. Um, or you have short-term memory loss. Um, so it does give you that opportunity to really inject new content into your site on a regular basis. And, and again, that's something that, you know, if you're familiar with HubSpot, they create inbound marketing software. 
you'll hear statistics like you know companies that blog on a regular basis get 55% more um, web traffic and 70% more leads. Um, but then what you really need to think about is um, you know how much time you <coughs> dedicate to it. But once you do have that content, it gives you something to share with your social networks. It, uh, it can position you as a subject matter expert. It gives you a chance to engage with your audience, and it, it hurts my heart a little bit. Um, like I get if I work for an airline, I probably wouldn't want to leave comments on because I wouldn't know what to do with them if people were angry because I raised prices. Um, but also, like for a lot of businesses, one of the things that ultimately you'd like to do is to have somebody actually leave a comment. So it always does sort of, uh, it, it's always sort of disappointing when you see businesses that probably should have their comments turned on um, when they don't. Uh, I saw somebody that, that works with small businesses, does marketing stuff, and I was like, yeah, I probably could have your comments on. Um, because that's really what one of the things you're trying to do. It, you know, it gives you a chance to gather real-time feedback, test new ideas, and, and ultimately generate leads. And we can talk more about call to actions and how you can do that with your content. So those are when I usually think about why would this make sense. I also have these on a handout, so at the end if you want to grab a handout, um, don't worry about it, write them all down. Um, so so you, a lot of you already have a blog. What do you talk about? What are those buckets of information you want to share with your audience? What categories? What types of things? Art. Art. What about art? Art for healing and high achievement is one, and then the other one is uh, information and inspirations for wordsmiths. Okay. I know I need some inspiration for wordsmithing a lot, so. I'll give you the address. <laughs> okay, there you go. What else? So, so sort of the, the creative inspiration and, and <coughs> what other types of general buckets would, would, you, um, would you talk about? sometimes differentiators or your approach to business or maybe other people in your space or other industries you like to target. That's not only a great example for something to think about in your blog content, but just in your website content. Because at some point, explaining how you engage with your customers or your clients and explaining that process can really help. So absolutely differentiate yourself and talking about your business is different. Because believe me, there are, every day there are more and more businesses out there. It's getting more and more competitive. And one of the things you're going to differentiate yourself on is sort of the, that little secret sauce that makes you unique from you know, Nathan Talk Dogs on the Corner or whatever. So, Anything else? One more? Back's awful quiet. Anybody in the back? I do want to start one for words. A love of words for people who, who gain words, like tournaments, gravel players. And that's a loyal group. I'd be curious to see. I don't know what's <laughs> going on in that space. But my old boss was a big Scrabble fan, and uh, uh, so I think she would, she would check that out. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, I work with a lot of high tech products, a lot of technical explanations for things, like how it works, or something that people are working That's a great point. Somebody referred to it as additive, uh, additive. manufacturing. Yeah. And, and then I was like, yeah, I was like, additive manufacturing. And then I looked at it, I was like, oh, you 3D printed. So yeah, I, I would like that. Um, so yeah, so when you think about it, there's sort of the informational the how to's, right? There's also sort of tips and tricks. You can think about case studies. So if you do have successful, uh, even if it's not something you work with directly, but you can sort of uh, um, profile you know, certain case studies. You can share customer testimonials. There is a chance to be sort of a shameless self-promoter and, and celebrate. And the, the customer success stories are one of those. Um, one of the ones, so I, I have two different approaches with my small business blog. I talk about small business marketing. But with Fast Company, a lot of times what I do is talk about what I think are emerging trends. So you can do different things for different people, obviously, based on that, that readership. Um, and, uh, and product reviews, if you have something coming out, or the, the crazy technical stuff. Uh, I think Moo.com does a really good job with creative inspiration because they, they design business, or they print business cards and all kinds of stuff. And they're really passionate about design. So even a lot of their social media posts aren't necessarily, hey, we have a new business card out, but this is some creative inspiration. Uh, a lot of stuff around typography and stuff that's really cool if you're sort of into that kind of stuff. Um, Reactions to relevant industry news and, and business updates. I know in another session they talked about, you know, you can show your personality if you added somebody <laughs> to the team. Um, you can you can really have some fun with that. But but again, from an engagement standpoint, the business updates are they're fine depending on what they are. But but I think those are one of the ones that, that sometimes are a little bit more difficult to drive engagement with. But above all, you want to be interesting and relevant. And I think that really depends um, not on what's interesting and relevant to you, but what's interesting and relevant to your audience. So that's sort of the guiding principle, I think, when you're, and it's easy to get off track. And we'll talk a little bit about staying focused with your content, um, but those are uh, some of the areas when I think about, um, you know, what you can talk about that, uh, that makes sense. How do you do it? A lot of people already have blogs. I'll, I'll go through this really quick. Um, you know, 
depending on if you have a website, what content management system you already use, um, they could have a specialized blogging platform or widget in there. But it still seems that the universe is pretty much still WordPress, Blogger, and Tumblr. Uh, you know, it just depends on the bells and whistles that you're looking for, what you like. Uh, I, I've never been a fan of Blogger. Uh, Tumblr's fine, and, and so, you know, but, but a lot of my stuff's a little bit longer form content. So I started with WordPress and it was something random. Now, I, through my site, I use Expression Engine. Um, but, uh, but I think it really, you know, WordPress still seems to be the most popular. I'd say the, the thing I would really think about there is a lot of times as a small business, you have your website over here, and you say, I want to add this blog. And if you can't integrate it, um, a lot of times what people will do is they'll sort of have these two parallel platforms. And I'm never usually a fan of that because it's really hard to replicate the navigation. If you take somebody off your site, it's hard to get them back to your site. So one of the things you want to do is get them from your site to your blog so that they like you and they establish you're a subject matter expert. And you get them to the point where they're ready to make a purchase. You know, why make them click one more time to come back? So if, if, if at all possible, always looking for opportunities to integrate that blog platform into your website so they'll look seamless. Um, sometimes that's easier said than done. What you'll see a lot of people, and, and I'm sure you see this, you know, WordPress started out as blogging, but now pretty much a lot of websites, people are just building their website in WordPress, even if they don't really care about blogging. And the benefit there, so, so for all the small business folks, and I'm just talking to, to Mike from Cell Home before the session about this, you know, there's something to be said for these platforms because it makes it easy for you to update your own content. And I see a ton of small businesses that will have their neighbor's son who's home for Christmas build their website in Wix or some, some platform, and then they fall off the face of the earth, and then they're stuck with a website that they can't really make an update to. So that's, if, if nothing else, I think that's a really intriguing part of a lot of these platforms, is you're able to go in and make a lot of the updates yourself, uh, because you don't want to spend all that time thinking about your content, your website, and what makes you different, and, and designing everything, only to have it be something you can't update. So that's sort of a, a penny-wise and pound-foolish um, example, but... but uh, what? What is Expression Engine? It's just a content management system that my website's through. So I'd say it's, you know, just a web, it's just where all my files are and where I post okay. my blogs to, but I'd say don't even worry about it. But that's just, it evolved. Like I was in WordPress and then, then when we are working on my website, um, that's the platform I'm on with. So. Questions about platforms? So you've thought about, does this make sense for me? Which is, which, and one of the ways to think about that, they talked about guest posting in another session. Um, I'd really encourage people to do that because well, there's sort of a story arc to this where you have a lot of ideas, and especially when you hear the HubSpot stats and you go, if you blog once, twice, three times a day, all you got to do is blog, 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 and then like that one on one commercial for the website where they're like, you know, create a website, everybody will find you, you'll get rich, and you can ride off into the sunset and they throw confetti, and you, you don't have to worry about anything. But there's a lot of strategy, this is going to take a lot of strategy, right? So even when I think about my story arc for, for starting as a blogger, I had all these ideas and all this content in my head, and then about three months into it, I'm like, you know what, I'm sort of, I'm running out of ideas. So you got to pace yourself, you got to think about this for the long haul, because at the end of the day, as small business owners are, are working in a nonprofit, it is hard to find time to do all the things <laughs> that you do, and then also put your creative hat back on and, and generate some content that's, that's interesting, right? Uh, so, so I'd say pace yourself and really think about um, you know how frequently you want to do it, and uh, and then then experiment a little. Now, so once you figure out if it makes sense for you, and then what platform you're gonna gonna really choose, uh, there are some sort of uh, common themes of blogs that I think kick ass, right? So Constant Contact does a lot of stuff that I think is interesting. One of which is they have a rotating image on the top, so it highlights some of their most popular posts. And so that brings the visual in. So you won't usually see that. A lot of the times in blog orientations, you'll just have to scroll, 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 they'll be chronological. But they're probably the only one, at least, that I've seen from a big business that sort of rotates it through, or they were one of the first people to do it. And I just like that that sort of, it, it's moving, it's fresh, and it pulls the visual components in. But then they also include, and, and this is a no-brainer, but as a small business or a nonprofit, I think this is something everybody keeps coming back to. Social media integration, but trying to be all things to all people. So if we would have done this session six months ago, everybody today would have said everybody should be on Pinterest. Pinterest was supposed to be the next big thing. It's fine, right? But if six months ago, if you talked to six months ago, Sean, I'd be like, everybody's talking about Pinterest, and um, it's since cooled off, right? So it might not make sense for your business, or you might not have the time to really dedicate to make it really what you want it to be. So think about it. you don't you know they have Google Plus and YouTube. You know, we, we talked about in another session earlier, Google Plus has search ranking implications. 
Um, but at the end of the day, if, if you're on it, you're, if you're getting engagement, you're probably one of the three people. Because it's usually post, 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 and then nothing happens, and then every once in a while somebody will give you a plus one. Um, so think about what really works for, for your audience, but then make sure it's easy for them to, to share your content. But more importantly, I think especially early if you're just starting a blog, is this idea, they call it their expertise, but I would call it categories, so, so those things. So not just tagging your posts with certain keywords, but thinking about whatever business I'm in, these are the five to seven things I'm gonna talk about. And that's really what's gonna be, what's gonna drive your content strategy. And it's easy to get off focus with that. So you could say, <coughs> you're in this line of business, but I really am interested in um, writing about Scrap, right? So if your people are coming to your site for whatever your, your subject matter expertise is, and it's not Scrabble, you can start to, to maybe lose that audience. So not that you can't do that, but I'd say this makes it easier to guide your content strategy, but also makes it easier once people get to your blog to find it. Now Chris Brogan is, is a, you know, a legendary um, marketing social media person, and it was interesting to me because he just refreshed his website and it looks awesome, but I was looking for some content and I couldn't find a search box, right? So sometimes I just want to search for a keyword or I want to look for those categories. So I think a lot about like how are they going to navigate once I get them to the blog, what are some other ways that I can get them to check out some of my other content? So categories are important, keyword search is important, um, you know, just so that once they're there, they can, they can find some of your, your other interesting posts. And you'll see blogs that do, if you like this, you'll love this, right? So I'd say think about how this all um, fits in, but the, but the uh, expertise of your categories will be what really helps drive your strategy. Once you, you have the sort of the blocking and tackling and saying, okay, these are the function, this is the functionality that I'm gonna have on the back end of my blog, um, then you need to think about what are people gonna, gonna click on. And, and so you can either start with the title and then generate the content, or start with your content and generate the title. I usually do some combination of both. Um, but at the end of the day, the, uh, you need, you need, your titles need to be descriptive enough that people know what they get when they're looking, when they see it, they'll recognize that it's something that they wanna read but not so descriptive that it gets bogged down. And that's usually 75 characters or less. And that can be tricky. Um, but I think this is a great example of the end of the female-friendly workplace. Um, because you're gonna wonder, like, what happened to the female-friendly workplace? When did it end? What's gonna happen, right? And the other thing that I think they did really, uh, their platform's pretty cool because it also allows you to put this custom teaser in. So if you're entering the blog post in the back and they actually have that teaser area, and that's cool because that'll be what pulls up a lot of times. You can either cut and paste that into Facebook so I can have that be the status updates, what I'm sharing, and I don't have to do some artistic interpretation of what the posts mean. I can just pull this two or three sentence. And you know with Facebook too, um, usually status updates that are longer than three sentences don't get as good of engagement as those that are under three sentences. I know it keeps changed or whatever, but sometimes you're tempted to paste like a five paragraph status update, and I'm always curious what to do with those. Um, but the teaser I think is a great, um, a great thing not only to, to make it easier for people to share your content and, and paste that, um, but I think also as a writer, it makes you think like, okay, if I had to sum up this post in two sentences, what would it be? Um, and the other thing that I love, and this is something, when I first started blogging, we didn't use images at all. And, and one of the things I'll talk about tomorrow is even when you think about social media, images have sort of just disappeared for, for years and years and years. And now, and for five years or whatever, things have been out. Um, but now you're finally starting to see those images come back. And one of the things I really like about this, um, if you look at my old posts, like there were no photos at all. And now Fast Company has an entire art department dedicated to the photo. So even if I find a photo, this isn't my pose, but if I find this photo and put it in, their art department would have the power to veto whatever photo I put in and put their own photo in, right? So they're thinking about it. And, and so images are finally starting to come back and be important in this whole social dialogue. And I think especially with, with blogging, it's, it's personal preference, um, but I, I can't imagine having a blog post without some kind of imagery in it because it helps round out your story. Right? I'm, I'm a visual person anyway, but um, you know, even, even what that means for social sharing. So if I go put this on Facebook, it's gonna pull that image and some content from here in, in the preview, and that's gonna make it even subconsciously more engaging for people to see it. So I'd say don't underestimate this. You know, your image strategy is just as important as your content strategy. Anybody familiar with ProBlogger? So ProBlogger was interesting because I've been blogging for a few years, and I got off path. Right, and then um, there's a book. There's a book called Pro Blogger: uh, Secrets for Blogging Your Way to a Six Figure Income. And I, there's probably I, I, this is probably a year old, so I don't know if there's a newer title to it. If they've redone a reprint, but I'd say this was really, really helpful in thinking strategically about how to approach blogging from a business standpoint. I'll say that I don't know if anybody's making six figures off the blog, 
but there are definitely benefits to blogging. I don't know that I've cracked the six-figure benefits to blogging, but I think even without that, there's some really interesting stuff on here. And, and it was it was really looking at some of the pro blogger content that got me to start to think more strategically about my titles, my images, how I organize this this navigation on the side, and they also have a website. So there's a lot of information on blogging that I'd recommend. Um, but really, the takeaway from here is. When people come to your site, they're looking for a lot of different things. And uh, you know, for a while, it was all about you know, down, just offer them a free white paper, an ebook, capture their email, and again, you can just ride off into the sunset, throw some confetti, you'll do some inbound marketing, you'll make a ton of money. Um, it seems like that's that sort of backing off a little bit. It still could play a role, but this is a subtle thing. So get them to subscribe to your newsletter. So now you're not just sitting back and, and waiting for them to come back to read the next blog post. You have an excuse to sort of push content out to them on a regular basis, right? Um, and the other thing that they did is they really, um, they, they talk a lot about how to format your content. So it's not just enough, and I think for when you first start out blogging, you think it's just content. But it's not just about creating four paragraphs and putting them up. So you'll see a lot of times, people be great writers, people be great web writers, but there's, there's an art to sort of creating engaging content that pulls the reader in and gets them to read the post. And it becomes harder and harder as people's attention spans get smaller and smaller. So how do you use your format? How do you use your font? How do you use subheadings, bulleted lists, numbers? And you, you know, you, you, you need to find what works for you. Everything doesn't have to be a bulleted list. You know, you don't have to bold everything by any means. But really think about, you know, how do you chunk this stuff up and get people to, to read as much of the post as possible? And then at the end, you can, you can ask them a comment, you can point them to something else, that you can incorporate that call to action. And one of the things, when I mentioned HubSpot, uh, I think one of the things they're really great at is they, they use call to actions, uh, really awesome. So, so if you go to their blog, they'll use sort of a graphical call to action at the bottom. Sometimes it's a free ebook, sometimes it's a free consultation or whatever. But they don't even just say, like, leave a comment. They'll give you something very tangible and concrete to do at the, at the end of every post. And I think I'm sort of curious about that. I think that makes some, some sense. So does that make sense? So think about, you know, is this, is this for me? And then if it is, you know, what, what's the right platform? How does it integrate to the website? But again, I'm, I'm always surprised at how many um, blogs either use um, no images or not the right images. And I know some of that's subjective, but uh, I'll have some pretty funny examples tomorrow. But, uh, but I think that's, that's becoming an increasingly important thing. And you see it with the success of Instagram and Pinterest where people are getting back to the visuals. So this is all part of this strategy and something that I've seen evolve. So at the very least, I think you should do, um, you want to determine whether it's right for you. And a lot of you already have blogs. If you didn't, I'd say go out and guest blog. Um, the, uh, we had a question before the session about how do you pitch, and it's the same thing about how do you pitch the media. I get folks that I can never tell if they're spam, because I'll get these emails through my contact form, and they'll say I'd like to write a guest post for you, and I'm not sure why they want to write a guest post, or they're interested in being a blog, or what's up. So I, I do spend like 30 seconds going, is this a legitimate person? And sometimes it's like, they said Sean, so maybe that's legitimate, but I'm not sure what they're up to, right? So there's something that, be, can, that can be said for tailoring the pitch. So if you say that there's a blogger you're really interested in, and, uh, and I'm sure it's the, the big time bloggers get a lot of pitches, so it's, those are the harder gets. But customize it, let them know you're familiar with their work. I mean, one of the best pitches I ever got for a story idea was, a guy from grasshopper.com that creates virtual phone services for entrepreneurs. And he, he, he saw a post that I had written and he said, hey, I saw this post, it was about my design right here in Pittsburgh. And he said, uh, I think we're doing some really cool stuff about, um, uh, about cre creative workspaces and uh, I'd love to just talk to you about it. And uh, so then we, we scheduled that call and, and that, was, that was the pitch. So the same thing could happen with a guest blog. You'd say, hey, I really enjoyed this post. Uh, you know, I'd really, if there was an opportunity to, to write a guest post for you, I'd, I'd really be interested in that and tailor the post that way. Um, but it is a commitment. There's nothing worse, especially small business owners, if you create something and then you don't update it for six months, which happens a lot. Um, or if you do a lot of this stuff, like you just check the box and say, all right, I, po I post all these, these blogs, nobody comments on it, nobody shares it, nobody likes it. At some point, it's not serving the purposes you want it to. So really think about, you know, is this right? Can I sustain it? Um, is it something I'm passionate about? You know, and maybe you don't want to write longer form blogs, which maybe there's a question in another session about length. You know, you're probably looking at least 500 words. I mean, you can go shorter form, but you know, when you think about what's what a paragraph is and how many paragraphs you need to sort of tell a cohesive story. Uh, but all my posts are usually somewhere between 500. If I get to 750, I'm really excited about them because uh, I don't know that many words. I can only. <laughs> um, 
the uh, picture platform, and, and again, some of that, if you, if you already have a website, I'd really think about what you can integrate. Uh, if you can integrate it, uh, great. If not, try to make it as seamless as possible. Map out that content strategy, and I think that's, that's critically important early, um, because if, if you don't, it's easy to get off track. And those are the things that people that think about search and all the benefits to why you're trying to do this blog to get people to come to your site. You want to be as, as much as you can on point with what you're doing. Um, create an editorial calendar. Uh, I'll never forget, Keith Ferrazzi wrote a book called Never Eat Alone. I don't know if anybody's heard of it. Right. Um, but he, I remember he had a day where he would just read. And there was a day, maybe he had a day where he'd write, a day where he'd read. And I remember thinking, like, that's crazy. I can't imagine doing that. And, it, and again, like, over time, um, I found it much more effective to say, like, on these days, I'm going to dedicate every time that I can, um, you know, whether it's Tuesdays and Thursdays or Sundays. That's when I'm going to work on my blog content. That's been, you know, helpful for me just having that editorial calendar and saying um, I'm going to dedicate that time because it's easy to find other things to take up your time. Once you have that editorial calendar, think about your titles, and you know it can even be helpful to think about the titles that you're attracted to. Always think about, and, and now you'll see a lot of because uh, it's the way people search for things. But five ways to do this, you know, and so I'll even do those sometimes. How to do that? Not everything has to be a bulleted list or five amazingly simple ways to do something. Um, but in a lot of cases, that's what people are looking for. But think about how to use your title strategically. Think about how to use your content, your images, um, and, and really pull the reader in. Share new posts via your social networks. And there was some question earlier about, you know, you can automate them, just push them out to everybody. Um, you can push them out to Google+, Plus, but then nobody knows they're there uh, today, but that might change next week. Um, but, uh, you know, really think about what are the ways that you can share your content. <laughs> This has changed too. It used to just be you'd put it out on Twitter, there weren't that many people there, and at least somebody would see it. Right? So it, it almost became what direct mail. When, when you think about direct mail, there was a time where people must said, you know, I can read 6,000 people for $38, and that's awesome. And that's sort of what social's become, right? I'm going to broadcast, broadcast, broadcast. We all talk about engagement, but people don't engage. I talked to Nick a couple weeks ago on Facebook, and you, you want to share your example about saying hello to people when they're walking down the street? Or not, not to put you on the spot. No, that's all right. Um, if I have like a really good day, I'll just say hi to random people who walk down the street, just to be like generally fun and friendly. You know, I'm having a really good day when spreading around. And about 50% of people are usually respond back and say, "Oh, hey, how's it going?" Or, "Hey, you having a great day? How are you?" And no, nobody kind of doesn't. But sometimes there'll be the people that just kind of stare back at you, and they just kind of like walk past you, like absolutely insane. And say, oh, wonder what you're doing. So I start thinking, because I'm cynical. That's what social media is now, right? Except it's not 50%, it's probably 25%. Like think about all the times you engage and we talk about getting people excited about your products and your services and you get them, you want them to your doorstep, you want them to your website and then they get there. And I see it every day. Companies are horrible at engagement, right? So you got to engage. And so that's the, when, when I saw that post from Nick, I was thinking, you know, if, if Nick walked by and said hello to me on, on the street, I didn't say anything, he'd be like, what a jerk. <laughs> that happens every day, right? Think about all the times you tweet somebody or whatever, and that's it's just a missed opportunity. Keep a running list of story ideas. I have a, a, a piece of paper everywhere with random uh, story ideas that either will be creative inspiration, like one I'm probably going to talk about is uh, I got a flyer stuck in the mailbox from this company called Johnny Ballgame, uh, and they do uh, house cleaning. I, I, I'm just curious, like this name Johnny Ballgame, I mean, I'm I'm also curious because they did the stuff it in your mailbox uh, solicitation thing, which is always, you know, a little uh, rule breaking. But uh, but this Johnny Ballgame. Uh, so uh, I, I took the flyer. At first, I threw the flyer out. And I was like, "What do I do with that Johnny Ballgame flyer?" <laughs> and I said, "I know a neighbor that never picks anything up." And I said, "It'll still be on their mailbox." So I went and got the Johnny Ballgame flyer from across the street. Um, but keep a running list of story ideas. I, I, I think that's it's it's there's gonna, there are going to be times where for whatever reason you have an idea or you see something or there's something you want to respond to, or a news story, if somebody in somebody's Facebook feed, like the photo that I'll show tomorrow, this barber shop has a sign that says, uh, I think it's brilliant, um, walk-ins welcome, and they have a picture of Christopher Walken. <laughs> and it's brilliant. So as soon as I saw that, I, I didn't even know what I was going to talk about, but I'm like, this is amazing, I'm going to blog about it. <laughs> I'm probably going to print it out and put it on my wall. Um, but but that, and that, that's the example of small businesses showing their personality. Like, a lot of barbers, I don't go to a lot of barbershops, a lot of barbershops have walk-in signs, but not a lot have that little creative spin, and that was something that they took a picture of, I blogged about, right? So that was uh, one little thing that they did that was, was fantastic. Um, 
and then you know make tweaks as needed. Uh, but the other thing I'd say is really look for opportunities to, to incorporate images. I, I know I sound, I keep coming back to that, but that's the one area that I'm going to be surprised about. Um, so those are sort of the, I think, when you're thinking about blogging, the very least thing that you should do. And um, at the end of the day, if you can't imagine linking to whatever you're about to write about, don't write about it, right? And it's funny, because sometimes it'll make sense at the time, but then you go back six months later, and that's when I really, I transferred all my blog content from WordPress over to this expression engine. And then it was when I saw it, like, why did I write about that? <clears throat> so it's sort of funny when you're in the middle, sometimes you don't even realize that it doesn't fit into your strategy. And then when you're literally cut and pasting, I was like, well, that didn't make sense. So, so it's something that's an evolutionary process. Um, I mentioned uh, ProBlogger, which I, which I definitely think is a website and as a book could be interesting. Um, one of the things that, that, especially if you write for a living, which, which is scary, um, sometimes you get stuck. And so this book called Accidental Genius, and I'm not a book reader, but these are two books that I found very uh, helpful. And what I think is really helpful about this is it gives you different ideas that can help get you unstuck. You have a lot of exercise. I didn't do any of the exercises, but still, I have a short attention span. But even without it, like there are times now where I'm, I'm writing and I feel more liberated to sort of just let it flow because sometimes you do get up in your head and you're worried about keywords and this and that, and you miss out on some of that personality. So these would be my two. If I had a book club, these would be uh, two of the books on, on my reading list. Uh, and that's uh, that's all that I had. Um, I did want to mention, does everybody know about the Pittsburgh Bloggers uh, Facebook group that was created by our very own Emily Levinson? I, I believe she's the creator uh, that did a session at 2 o'clock. Uh, but there's a Facebook group of Pittsburgh Bloggers, uh, and the response to that was just amazing. I, I also saw recently the Pittsburgh Business Times is uh, creating a directory of, of bloggers, I believe, Pittsburgh bloggers, but they're charging like 200 bucks. And so, as a purist, I'm like, well, number one, I'm not paying, I'm not paying 200 bucks. And number two, I, as, a, as a purist, I don't know that I could pay to be in a directory of bloggers. But those are two resources that are out there, uh, and we'll see what, but there's, there's a lot of traction, and I think it was, I think the Pittsburgh bloggers Facebook group was interesting because immediately people just started coming out of the woodwork. And there's just a, I had to turn the notifications off because it was like, you know, a video game where it's like blink, 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 and I was like, I can't, my, my status is uh, blown up. Um, you know, the other question that came up was, you know, how do you get over your fear of blogging? And I think as small business owners or, or anybody that, that sort of has a customer facing role, um, that's, that's always sort of a, uh, I think it's an interesting journey. I think there, there are times where there are always going to be better bloggers. Hopefully there'll be bloggers that aren't as good, right? You'll be, you'll be somewhere there. Um, but, but I think you do have to have confidence in, so, some, some of your confidence will come from the process. Some will come when you share a post. I don't get a lot of feedback, which is another thing. When you're trying to reach out to these people, um, there's a, a lady named, um, I think her name's Amy Levin Epstein, and she writes for CBS Money Watch. And she's the only person I've ever seen that linked to one of my blogs, posts, and then sent me an email and said, hey, I just want you to know I linked to one of your blog posts. And I was like, that's interesting. I was like, let me go check out this, this, this article. And then, so then it created a dialogue. So there are little things that you can do, again, when we think about just pushing stuff out, pushing stuff out, pushing stuff out. Um, the, the, that's sort of what social media has become, but that's sort of not as effective. So sometimes when you're sharing your content, it really is about emailing Mike and saying, hey, I thought you might find this interesting. You know, tweeting directly to certain people instead of just putting it on blast and thinking everybody's going to automatically retweet it. Um, so it's, it continues to evolve. But 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 it is funny. Like sometimes you won't think that anybody's reading your stuff, and then somebody will say like, "Oh, I saw that. and It was really helpful," and that helps build confidence, right? Um, so I'd say it's uh, and sometimes you've got to let it fly. But be ready for the uh, sometimes you don't know what people are going to react to too. So uh, when you put content out there, just make sure that whatever it is you feel comfortable with. <laughs> People are getting lazy now, so they don't comment as much as they used to, unless you're, you know, the big the big dogs. Uh, but anything can sort of blow up pretty quickly. So, questions? Yes. So you have a company that starts a blog and they're fresh on the blog scene. Should you put in a backlog of posts, or just schedule all your content to go through in advance? Or should you keep a little back and then? Let it go slowly. I would just whatever your your cap. So the question is, do you do you, if you're just starting a blog, do you just sort of pre-populate or just start? Uh, you know, I'd say just get into that routine and just push it out on a schedule because you do miss some of that if you're if you're backdating them. Then they're sort of or you put out like five on one day. Yeah, that's the chances are like and and if you do that, like you could easily get caught up with that. You're only gonna have so much content. Like right. like I said, like if you're like Homer Simpson and you only have so much, you can only handle so much in your head. Um, 
if you cram five out a day, like you know, you, there might be a day where you're like, I wish I had four of those back because I have no more ideas. <laughs> but I do think there's something to say. And you know what? Let's just get into that routine. There's there's a lot that can be said for sort of that um, the uh, making momentum a mindset and just saying whatever days of the week it, it is for you, um, you're going to write it, you're going to publish it, and go. And I also don't think that's is somebody going to um, is it better to have that stuff immediately from a search standpoint or to continually just push it out? I'd say continually just push it out as you would, and then get them in the routine and know when your stuff's going to be published. So I don't think anybody's going to judge you and go, like, what, you've been blogging for three weeks? Um, but I will tell you, when people pitch me for their businesses, and I, I hate press releases, which I try to bring up at least every session, um, the, uh, at the end of the day, when people are pitching, I, I do sort of look at if I went to your site and your blog's out of date and your social media stuff is not is out of date because part of this is if I'm writing something, um, I want to make sure that you can help amplify it. And if you're not doing that stuff, um, I don't know. You know. Like not to say that I won't do it, but that is something I'll, I find myself looking at. Like are they are they active? What are they doing? So, other questions? Yes. Um, I think when I first started blogging last year, I kind of fell into that myth of the confetti and riding off in the sunset. So I was writing every week, but I didn't know how to get people to read it. And so now I think more people that are reading it, maybe it's <laughs> um, So I'm wondering about older stuff. Does it ever make sense to like delete posts that maybe aren't as relevant or maybe didn't reflect my best work? Um, and just keep the stuff that I think is still really relevant and good and maybe try to promote that? You don't take a hit for doing that from a search standpoint. So it depends I mean, on... None of it's horrible and embarrassing yeah. to my business, but some of it's just not. The, uh, you, you, like, well, like, like, like I, revisionist history, like a lot of politicians would love to be able to be like, yeah, I never said, they, I never said that, what are you talking about? Uh, but here's a video, but I wasn't made. You took it in the wrong context. Um, but, I, you know, I, I think the... Uh, if it's if it's out of focus, so I had that. So I was a, I, I wrote a lot about careers, and my entire with my book out was all career posts for four years or whatever it was. And then as I shifted to small business, um, it wasn't part of my focus. So when I transferred from WordPress over to Expression Engine, at first I did it to, to maintain to make Nick happy. I, I was like, you know what, I've been post, I've been posting since 2007 or whatever. But then after a while, it's like I knew that people were going to come there, and if they're not if they're looking for small business marketing, Sean, they're not going to want small business or career Sean. So I deleted all those posts. It was like four years worth of posts. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was talking to HubSpot at one point. I don't even know how many index pages I had. And they were like, wow. Um, but so I, I'd say I wouldn't, um, if they're irrelevant, I'd think about it. If they're just, I, I look at it as sort of a journey. Like if, it, if it's sort of, my, I'm sure some of my release, I wrote about random stuff. I wrote about the A-Team for, in Fast Company Publishing. I wrote about the A-Team, not the remake crappy movie, but the original TV series, which was awesome. I wrote about the A team and leadership, right? And it was it cracked me up. And, and it's uh, <laughs> still out there somewhere. So some the fawn, I did one about the Fonz and leadership. Oh, oh there was it was teamwork in the A team, and then the Fonz was leadership. You know, so so I don't I wouldn't worry about um, the evolution of the content. I'd say if it's not relevant, maybe think about that. Other questions? I think I have um, constant content. Envy because I just set up the uh, a blogging site in WordPress. Mm. It sounds to me like constant contact has a lot more bells and whistles to it. Well, but that, but they're they probably built that so that that I wouldn't even worry about that. I'm saying that as you go out and think about what are some nice to have, constant contact. I'm sure they spent a lot of money. I think it's safe to assume that they did that. So that's probably some custom um, thing that they built to to do whatever they wanted to do. So I wouldn't worry about constant contact. I'd say if you're thinking about it, you know, the great thing about WordPress is you can get off the ground immediately, and then you can decide how fancy you want to make it. Um, yes? Well, I was going to, I'm curious about this, because I use constant contact to do email marketing. Sure. But do they do blogs? They have a blog, and that's what I'm saying. They not, have not a blog, blogging but not... That was an example of, mm -hmm. like, if you go back, that was just a, boy, you know what? That's pretty sweet. Like they, they have some elements in there that I like a lot. And, and for me, and it's funny because philosophically, I believe that this should always be there. Like your categories. Like I'm going to talk about these five or six things. And it is surprising that some, that some phenomenal bloggers don't have it. And so I haven't talked to them, but I'm just curious because to me, it's always have a search box, always have the category so you make your content easy to navigate. You can do sort of a category cloud or whatever, which was popular back in like 2009. Um, and. Uh, I thought I was sort of a hipster, so we changed my uh, most popular post to the Hall of Fame, 
I thought that was pretty cool, right? Um, show them a personality a little bit. But, uh, but yeah, so Constant Contact offers solutions, but that was more of an example. They have their own blog. They share contact or uh, blog content with their customers, and I like a lot of the, the aesthetics. I don't know what their analytics look like, but... Any other questions? Well, like I said, uh, tomorrow we'll talk about images, so if you get a chance to check out my, uh, my session on image strategy. I do have um, a handout on uh, the benefits of having a small business blog, and uh, the books are up here, I have some cards. Uh, so thank you very much for your time. I hope you found that, uh, that helpful, and uh, enjoy your rest of the day. I'm here to